Hello, I'd like to do a review about the book Freedom, The End of the Human Condition. So, as you'll see on Amazon, if you go through the reviews, there's a lot of very positive reviews and a lot of very, very negative reviews. So I'd just like to share my experience and um, go through the book chapter by chapter. So this book has nine chapters. And so the first thing is I downloaded Freedom on my Kindle. Um, and I actually I didn't have a Kindle, so I bought a Kindle for this because I didn't want to spend a dime uh, for the author and for the organism uh, spreading this information because to me it looked so fake and it looked like a new age type of thing, like a new sort of religion or whatever. But because they were claiming that this was the book that saves the world, I was I thought that it was my responsibility to to read it and to see what it was all about, because I was looking for answers to why we humans behave the way we do. And the author, uh, Jeremy Griffith, claimed he could explain all of this. So I downloaded Freedom on my Kindle and started reading it. So there's nine chapters in it. And the first chapter, I was really disappointed, because the first thing is telling us is, oh, we have this understanding. I have explained the human condition, but you cannot understand this at first because it's too confronting and your brain is afraid of it. So you will not be able to hear what I'm actually saying. And I was like, oh, that's a little bit easy to say. You have the answers, but no one can read it. Uh, I went to chapter two and chapter two is explaining why um, the current uh, explanation we have for our divisive and competitive and egocentric behavior mainly namely that uh, we have um, savage instincts that uh, survival of the fittest instincts like all the other animals that that he said was a lie that wasn't why we were competitive that we didn't have these instincts although all the other animals did so wow i was like oh that's a lot of kind of strange things but i'll keep going because next chapter chapter three is the one where he claims he explains the human condition so what he explains in chapter 3 is that there's a conflict between our instincts and our intellect. That we have moral instincts. And instincts in general, they, they require just obedience. And they don't, try, they don't understand the world. They just, they just give you a direction. But we are quite an intellect. And the intellect needs understanding. So he needs freedom. And, and he needs to liberate himself from the instincts. So he can experience and understand the world. So we have two systems within us and they are at war. And that is why the human condition emerged. And this is why we are psychotic or neurotic and where all the anger in us comes from. So at this point, I couldn't really um, tell whether this was right or wrong. It was a different view from the one I've read before. But at this point, I couldn't, I couldn't say it was wrong and I couldn't tell why this explanation was any better than any other. But I went to the next chapter because next chapter he's claiming to have the understanding of the meaning of life and the purpose of existence in the universe. And I was like, oh, come on. I mean, so what he's saying in this chapter is that so what we call integrative meaning or in physics, it's the law called uh, negative entropy. And this, this law of physics states that in a system where energy comes in, like the universe or um, the earth with our solar system, matter uh, tends to organize itself and become more stable. It's looking for, to become um, stable, more stable and complex compounds of matter. And that was really like... To me, just down to earth physics, I was like, oh, well, is that the meaning of life? I don't really understand uh, why we, this would make that much sense. But it, this also means that uh, selflessness and cooperation is the purpose and the meaning of life. And what we humans in our behavior call love, because it's all about selflessness and sacrificing yourself for, for the others, for the welfare of the bigger group. And so that's, that's what the meaning of the universe and the meaning of life is all about. And when you think of it, it does make sense that from this place of utter chaos after the Big Bang, where we, it was just a cloud of, of dust and of 
cosmos, a thin particle of cosmos or whatever. We arrive to a place where there's, it looks like this uh, huge uh, organization hierarchy of matter and everything we look around us, every object is made of complex um, matter. It's not just any random dust. Randomness doesn't seem to to be what's what's happening in 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 our universe. Um, again, at this point, I was like, oh, okay, that that I cannot say it's wrong, but I'm a bit disappointed. I don't know, but uh, I kept reading. I was like, okay, I can until I haven't found something where I can tell 100% that it's wrong. I'll just keep on reading. So chapter five and six are a lot. It's a real really about biology. He's explaining how we acquired our moral instincts, how we became cooperative when other animals are so competitive, and our human history with the Australopithecine or or uh, or ape ancestors and how they evolved and became cooperative. Um, chapter seven is about how we acquired our consciousness, our conscious thinking brain, and why other animals didn't and that's true, he's the only guy that provides an explanation to why other animals never acquired a conscious brain. The ability to think, because this ability is obviously so useful. Like This is a, the greatest tool the universe has ever made available. But only humans acquired it. So he's explaining the nature of, of our conscious brain, of consciousness, and why we acquired it. But really, the the chapter that um, that talked to me the most was chapter eight, because in chapter eight he explains all of human history. He explained ever since we became conscious, because he explained um, our ancestors' history in chapter five and six, and in chapter eight he explains humans ever since we became conscious and ever since that war that between our instincts and our intellect broke broke loose, and especially uh, how agriculture like 11,000 years ago how this had a big impact on on us because we started settling down and building cities and the upset between people was becoming so obvious and upset was increasing and how this led to a, a time of warfare and uh, of fight between tribes and hordes of of different ethnic groups all over the globe I mean in Europe in Asia in the Middle East also in North America with the Apache and in Central America with the Aztecs. I mean, everywhere was just war and chaos and the the stronger survives, the one that kills the other survives. And that was our history. That's, I mean, it's, this made me understand that if we didn't have civilization the way we have it now, with laws regulating ourselves and the wish, the will to society pushing us to try to be good, we might as well be just brutal barbarians uh, and this history of slaughter is is true for every ethnic group uh, around the globe and it just shows how much uh, frustration and anger there is uh, within us humans and then it's really explained how the arrival of um, civilization as we know it today with Moses and his Ten Commandments um, who is installing the first laws uh, to try to regulate that upset behavior between, between humans. And after this, how religion came along and really made us long for cooperation and love instead of just expressing our anger and upset within us. So all these prophets like Jesus, Buddha, and uh, Mahomet, they really like gave people um, a purpose to, to pursue this uh, spiritual quest and long for love and understanding rather than just uh, expressing our anger. And so in more recent history, this also, he also explained uh, Marxism and socialism and how those movements try to install again cooperation between people rather than uh, selfishness but also freedom. So those movements were repressing freedom to install cooperation between people. And it goes the same way for um, envi the envi environmentalist movement uh, and the feminist movement and all those pseudo-idealistic movements that don't really 
address the core the core problem but try to restrain the anger but at the same time repress uh, of freedom freedom of speech and freedom of thinking in a sense so um yeah chapter eight was really the one where it really resonated with me and i was like oh i understand that we are upset and i understand how big this upset is and so the last chapter chapter nine is about uh, understanding how the world is going to be like once we humans understand the conflict in us and we can finally address the greatest fear of all that we have the fear of being bad of being evil and of being worthless and once this criticism from our instincts is dealt with and is no no longer pushing our behavior and dictating ourselves we are finally free we it's the ultimate freedom from our instincts but we can come back and we can finally live in harmony with our instincts with our cooperative and loving instincts and this changes everything from a society and a world where everything is about the the ego and selfishness people selfishly trying to prove their worth and prove they are better than the others to a world where love and cooperation is the main drive and the main purpose for people so this changes totally it's a it's a real like um, spiritual revolution and a spiritual awakening that awaits us so as you can tell this book has really um, impacted me and I, I think the world of this book and I really think this is the answer to all our problems it explains us humans this is the f first book it's the only book that claims to understand all of us humans all our history so just for the sake of that I think that everyone should at least take the initiative to try to read it and verify for themselves whether this is true or not but again he's the it's the only book that claims that it can save the world and I, I can tell you and many people will tell you that it is and we're gonna you're gonna be hearing more about this book in the years to come because the the potential of it is just immense so I hope this has um, given you a bit more insight into this book freedom the end of the human condition and hopefully you will uh, verify it for yourself and read it and it's a long book it's really hard to read because not because it's hard to understand but because it's very confronting it shows what we are doing it's it sheds the light on us and we realize oh this is this is me this is what i'm doing i'm i'm running away from the fear and this is like this is telling us this is here here you go you got the tool to face your fear now there's nothing to fear actually you are not bad you we humans are wonderful heroes of the history of life on earth We've gone through so much stress, so much criticism, undeserved criticism, and yeah, it's all over now. So yeah, I really, I really hope this um, review has helped you have an, an opinion on this book and hopefully it will get you started on reading Freedom. Anyways, have a good one.